Hello there and welcome to Paris Set Me Free, Paris photo tutorials where I grab a photograph that I've taken in Paris, Paris, France, and uh, and I talk about it. This one, I normally show you where it's been taken um, with uh, with Google Maps and some of the the different possibilities that I had. Uh, sometimes I take three or four or, or fifteen of the same shot and have to choose. That's not what this is about because I literally I couldn't find it. I couldn't find the original, but I think I know where it was. I think it was at uh, Montmartre. Uh, well, not quite. I think it was at Abess, Abess um, metro station. If you go there and look around, you'll see lots of these lovely uh, cobbled stones, which is one of the most uh, charming features uh, all around Montmartre. Uh, for a start, the, the streets go up and down, and there's loads and loads of lovely uh, staircases. I think I, I saw on a website recently there's about 20 of them, 20 of these long staircases going up because Mont, Montmartre, Mont means a hill, you know, mountain, M-O-N-T and, and anyway this isn't a hill, this is a flat-ish street although it, you know, no, I think it's a uh, Rue Le Pic um, oh I don't know, I'm not sure, I think it is and it's just next to uh, Abess metro station and if you get there early in the morning you often have this low slanting sun going across the cobblestones and this is a technique known as contre jour uh, which means against the day and uh, against the day I don't know but what it means is that you're shooting into the sun and what happens when you shoot into the sun is that you get long shadows coming towards you if there's something in between you and the sun which has a certain height and you can also get completely blinded if you stick your eye to the uh, uh, to the viewfinder and point it at that bright shiny thing. Um, so that isn't all of the photograph. Let me just chug it down a bit. There you go. It's quite a long one. Why did I make it longer? Uh, I've chopped the guy. Why did I chop the guy in half? Or, or the girl? Um, well, that's an interesting question that I've just posed myself, asked myself. Um, why ch chop the guy? Well, I chopped the guy to not chop the shadow. Why did I not chop the shadow? Well, if I had chopped the shadow, I could have had the shadow like that and then the guy possibly with the entire person's, I don't know, top of the body, shoulders and head. I'm not sure. I can't remember. I suspect that going up higher than this you started to get messy stuff like, I don't know, motorbikes parked by the side of the road, other people going by, bits, uh, litter, litter bins and all sorts of stuff. That's my, that's my theory, uh, looking back because I've tried, I'm, I did this one a while ago. Also, the shadow for me speaks almost more than the person themselves. The person has been reduced to a silhouette, a pure black silhouette, although I'm really not 100% certain, but I believe this is not a black and white photograph. I believe it's a colour photograph, and that is what happens. That's another characteristic of uh, shooting into the into the sun, contre jour, is that colours disappear. Uh, they get reduced to the, ba the the basic minimums of of light and shade, shadows and and highlights, and that's what you can see here. The sun is bi bouncing off the flat surfaces of the cobblestones. Can you see that there? There, where it's, I mean, why, why are they? There's a certain place in this photograph. It's around about here, where it's just become a pure white square or rectangle. Here, where the lang angle, you know, the closer it gets to you, the angle of the sun on it, and in, and your eyes is changing, and you start to see texture in these things. But I mean, I mean, look, I can, I bring it closer to you again, and you can see more and more texture is being revealed. You see here, it's not at all the same as here for example. that There the angle is just right for the sun to just be completely whiting out the entire top of that stone. Whereas here the angle's different and look how it progresses. It's a, it's a gradual progression through. A little bit of detail, a little bit more, a little bit more to this one here which is absolutely full of detail. Perhaps this stone here has as much um, uh, ruggedness, roughness as this one. 
but you can't see it. So that is something to remember. Your relative position to to things, to the thing you're photographing, like these, to the where the light source, the angle which the light source if, is hitting uh, things if they are reflective, all of this counts, and these are all things that we can play with. Uh, so I can't remember what I was talking about. Why did I choose the shadow? I chose the shadow <clears throat> because for me the shadow says more in some cases than the person themselves. The person has been made almost um, caricatural, if that's an English word. It's a person and they've either got a strange sort of mammoth double penis or possibly, possibly, because it's France, uh, are, car are carrying um, two baguettes. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, and that's about it, you know. Uh, well, well, hang on a second, hang on a second. Look, there's a couple of baguettes, long, thin, poly type things, and uh, look, there's a long pole, and there's a long pole, and there's an even longer shadow of a pole, and what about the shadow of this pole? Let's have a look how far that goes. Well, it goes right the way to the, the, the front of the photograph. So that's kind of nice, isn't it? And even his shadow sort of leads us in. Do note the legs. Is it a coincidence? Is it just by chance that the legs were open? Um, maybe. But I must admit that when I am taking photographs with people in them and I'm dehumanizing the people, it's not the person that I want. It's the the symbol of a person. And if they're walking, I generally want something which tells people that they're walking. And for me, that's legs astride as opposed to legs closed. There's always exceptions, you know, whatever works best. But And also, what you get when it's in contre-jour is the legs opening there and then the legs closing again in the shadow. So you have this interesting sort of diamond effect as well. Plus, if you've got other things, I mean, maybe I'm sort of saying this after the facts, as the French say. Um, I'm saying, oh, look, there's other things which are casting long shadows. You see how carefully I, carefully I planned that. To be honest, maybe it was complete chance. But having said that, it is good to have several things which are casting long shadows. It could be a bicycle going past, which, you know, you might have the wheels here and long shadows like this of the wheels. Anything like this which echoes the theme of the person. There's the person with the legs and the shadows and there's a couple of posts. He happens to be in the middle of the posts which may or may not be pleasing. You've got another one there in the middle which, which maybe it gets in the way, I don't know. And there's a, a symbolic French um, um, baguette thingy or whatever. Okay, um, black and white. Well, I could have turned it black and white. I've got, I, I'm, I'm really, I, I literally, I literally can't remember if I turned this black and white or if it's just the way it came out. You know, it looks so black and white. I'm thinking I must have just made it black and white, but I, I honestly can't remember. So, whenever you, for a start, get out early in the mornings and late in the evening as the sun is going down. Otherwise, you won't get this contour jour. A high sun high up in the sky is not very wonderful in terms of light. There's, you have to do other things when the sun is high in the sky. You have to look for interesting contrasts and funny situations and so on. Uh, you can get great photographs at any time, but if you want classic uh, street photography then you've got to get some photographs where you're playing with light, especially if you're someone who likes to turn them into black and white. Uh, so this is an example. Unfortunately you, in, you can't see all of it there. That's that's what it looks like. Uh, not not a stunning shot. I'm not claim, claiming that it's a brilliant shot. It's you know, but it, it illustrates a lot of lot of aspects. Um, one way of getting texture again in your photographs uh, and and interest and making it a bit punchy is to squat down as well. When you've got contre jour, you've got a low skimming light. Try squatting down and seeing what happens to the texture. What you often find is that the lines in between cobblestones get darker and the edges, the tops of them, get even brighter. So just, even if your light is crap, um, if you squat down and shoot across the surface of a cobblestone surface, that can, that can improve it. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks very much and uh, see you again soon on parissetmefree.com and in Paris. Bye! Depuis que je suis à Paris, le jour et la nuit, je suis gris. J'ai compris la douceur de vivre, je suis fou de joie, je suis ivre. Depuis que je suis à Paris...